All right, so looking at the Toolhand mobile app, we can see uh, when it is downloaded from Apple or uh, Google, depending on the phone you have, you would do the usual install. And after install, you will come to the settings page where you have to enter in your server. And this would be this the, the website that you use to log into the browser version. You enter in a company alias. Um, and if you're connecting to a CS108 RFID reader, make sure your Bluetooth is on. And you select this button and select it from the list. Uh, and you can do any of these settings as well. In the future, we'll be using some batch mode for the app as well. Once you've entered in this information, you hit save. It will tell you the record has been saved and you hit the back, tap the back arrow to go back to your login screen where you can enter in your username and password. If you're the only user on it, you just tap the remember me uh, button here so that will retain the username and password. If you're not the only user on it, obviously you can unselect that and the username and password will have to be entered every time. So we can click login. On your initial login, it will ask you for a stocking location. Subsequent logins will not ask you for this. It will default to whatever you've chosen before. In my case, this one up here on the top right. If you want to change that, you can go into the menu here and tap on select stocking point. And all your stocking points will be listed here and you can tap on the one that you want to retain. In this case, I'm going to keep with the Southeast. Now the menu op options we have at this time are transactions, which have issue return and requisitions. Inventory menu option has account and item lookup. Locations has transfer and receive transfer. And utilities has sync local data. If we look at issue and return, we tap on transactions and issue return. We can see we have use current date um, selected, so that is the actual time you are doing something. If you do not want to use the current date, we uncheck this box and you can enter in a date and a time that you want the transaction to occur. We'll use the current date. The location will default to the one you selected at the beginning for the stocking location. If you do want to change that, you can tap on here, select X, and tap a lookup on here and your list will come up again. And you can just select and tap on the location that you want if you have multiple ones. Let's try an issue transaction. So I tap in the, tra the transaction type box and tap on issue. I have the option of selecting a due date if I need to, but in this case, I don't really need to. My entity ID, if I know the entity ID, I can just type that in and it will find who I am. If I'm not sure, I can hit the lookup here, enter in part of the name, and it will show me a list of the entities that match that, and I can tap on the one that, to insert that. If I have a barcode, I can press the scan button, scan barcode here, and use the camera on the phone to scan that barcode. Furthermore, I can enter a reference now if I want to, to help with the trans transaction, enter a job number, sub job number, cost code if cost coding is needed. We can tap on cart at the bottom of the screen to go to the inventory ID to add to our, our list of what we want issued. Now here we can tap in the inventory ID field and type manually type in an ID if you know what that ID is. If you're not sure, you can hit the look up here and enter in a description. Three, three letters will be fine and it's going to find what, something that matches that and you tap on that to add it to here. Now you can see this is the first one because it's issue one. So anytime you add subsequent, it's going to show up here. You can see that there is a description, an inventory ID, a stocking unit, which is the part number, the quantity that you're going to be issuing, and down here will be the quantity on hand. Now we can tap the plus or minus to go up or down 
if we want, or we can tap in the field and put in a number directly. Now we can also, we can use the camera to scan And this will add it to it, but I don't have the required certifications, but that's fine because it will still show up anyway. And this is a serialized item. You can see that this one has a picture. And then if you just tap on the picture itself, you can see you get a, a full size version of what that item looks like. Hit back to go back here. Now I can add a signature to, to this to make sure that it's been received. I type in a signature and hit save, comes back to here. We do also have a notes um, button you can tab on if you want to add anything. If you want to add any notes to the transaction. And we have to hit back to, oh, sorry, we have to hit the cart to go back to here. Don't hit the back arrow or it exits right out of the application or the the issue return. And we have some options here that say we put in something we don't actually want. If you just want to delete one of these items, you tap and hold on the item and swipe a little bit to the left and you will see there's a delete and you can press that delete and the item will be gone. To clear the whole screen, you hit this delete up top and that will delete the whole cart but we don't want to delete. So if we're ready to issue out, we can just hit save. Are you sure you want to? Hit yes, we do. And it will save it and give us a number. There we go, a record save, and it tells us our transaction number as well. Just hit okay, and now we're ready to begin again. We can issue out or we can change that to return and return will work the same way except you're only returning the items that obviously were done there. And we want to exit out of here, we hit yes. In our requisitions, you can show that, it will show all the requisitions that are open for or that have been done for this location. Hitting this green or this black plus over here on the top right will allow you to create a requisition. Again, it defaults to the current location. Change that the same way. You, again, you can go to your entity ID. It puts that in. You can select a reservation, reference, job number, or cost coding if required. Then you can go to your cart and where it says stocking unit, this is the part number. So if you're not sure, you can either scan one if you have part number barcodes or you can hit the lookup and start typing in something and tap on it and it will come in there. And you can tap in the box and type in the number that you want. Tap outside of it to show that that's the number that is required. And then you'll just hit save. Make sure yes. And it will give you your transaction requisition number. And of course you do have to go back to your browser to approve this or, or and then ready to pick it. Obviously inventory, you have count. These will show you a list of the counts that uh, have been done for this location. Again, hitting the black plus on the tapping will allow you to create your, your count. Item lookup, you can scan an item or if you're using an RFID, you'll be able to scan an area and it will show you the inf current information about that. And as well in locations, you can create a transfer here. And again, it works the same way. You go to the cart and choose the items that you want to transfer. 
I'm going to be able to receive the transfer with, with this as well. In our menu, you will be able to see a few things. The settings, you'll be able to go into the settings and do any changes there. You can do, if you look at the about section, it will give you some information about data that is saved on this device. But you'll also see your version number and whatever uh, device you are using. Uh, so that's our brief overview of what you can expect in in the Toolhound mobile app. Thank you.